First of all, thank you very much for letting me join the school community tonight. Uh, it was very important for me. As soon as I, as soon as Anna Meek and Paul, my friends, told me of this meeting, it was very important for me to uh, to, to come here. Um, I obviously cannot make a commitment to solve this for you, and you know that. Um, but what I do make a commitment is to stand with you and to give uh, your concerns a bit more of a voice publicly and to do what I can to voice those concerns and to pressure the government to overturn this um, crazy decision. Um, I will seek to speak with the Premier this week and pass on the sentiments of this meeting and this community. Um, I will, uh, I'll be going back to Canberra in the morning. I'll seek to meet with Christopher Pine sometime in the rest of this sitting week in Canberra and pass on the concerns uh, of this community. Um, and I'll do whatever else I can to apply pressure to the government. I've already sent off a text to Matt Smith, who's still working at the Mercury, uh, and made a point that there's a lot of people at this meeting tonight, uh, and you're anxious and concerned. And I said, frankly, some of you are angry uh, about this, this crazy decision. Uh, so I'll do uh, what I can. I'll do that as your federal member of parliament, but I'll also do it as a member of your community. And as the father of two young girls, I've got a six-year-old and a seven-year-old at Princess Street, and they're facing exactly the same challenges up at Princess, uh, Princess Street right now. Um, frankly, I think this is a very, in fact, to quote Stefan, a lazy measure. You know, when you've, got to, when you've got to make adjustments to the budget, you've got to be clever about where you go and find the savings. Um, and you don't target coalface people. You don't target teachers, nurses, police officers, ambulance officers, fireys. Uh, you look for savings elsewhere. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, you know, there are many, many thousands of public servants in this state, and I don't want even one of them to lose their job against their will. But if they are going to go after those sorts of savings and sack people, then don't sack people at the coalface. Mm. Uh, and in particular, don't make savings like this, which in my opinion, uh, well, as we've heard, is going to have a number of consequences. One of the consequences that jumps out at me straight away is the effect on disadvantaged, mm. disadvantaged kids. Mm. Mm. You know, over four years in this job, I have heard uh, uh, constantly about kids with special needs who are already in under-resourced schools, uh, kids with autism and so on. Um, you start overlaying this sort of cutback on those sorts of schools, and there'll be kids like, the here, like that here in this school. Um, it has a disproportionate effect on those children and their families. Uh, I'm also very concerned that this is another, another attack on public education uh, in a country where there seems to be this, this constant move towards user pays, mm. where, where the wealthiest and most uh, advantaged families can afford private health care, private schools, you know, and they're doing OK. Uh, and disadvantaged people, or people like me, on a good income and by choice, who, who sends my kids to a public school, uh, we're having to put up with um, not a second-rate system, because our staff are still very good, but we can, only, we can only ask so much of the staff, whether it's uh, teachers at this school or nurses at the Royal. They can only hold together under-resourced organisations uh, for so long before they break. Um, so they're the sort of things that jump out at me and why uh, it was important for me to return from Canberra to, uh, to, step, or to sit with you tonight and to make a commitment to do what I can uh, to help you and to help all the other school communities around the state. Thanks, Stephen.